I'm here to argue why it is that if you are an American liberal, a social democrat as you would say in any other part of the world, you should be a libertarian. If you're a liberal, then you think that freedom is important. You also think that human well-being is important. You favour getting rid of poverty. You favour increasing the range of options and potential chances open to the population. All of these are reasons why you should be a libertarian rather than someone who supports an expansive or active role for government. Think about individual liberty. What is the greatest threat, the greatest enemy of individual liberty and human happiness on the evidence of the last 200 years, certainly, arguably several thousand years? The answer is concentrated political power. It is government and the state that has killed more people, destroyed more lives than any other force in human history. If you value these things, you must be opposed to expansive government. You also want to have a better life for people. You want people to have more options. You want people to have a wider range of chances in their life, to be able to do more things, to be able to fulfill themselves more. All of the evidence suggests that a free market economy is by far the most effective way of realizing these goals. It is the wealth created by a market economy that makes possible such a huge range of options and life chances for people today as compared to people in the past. It's also this kind of economy and a society with limited government which makes possible pluralism, a world in which many different ideas of the good life can live together peacefully without the people who hold them coming into conflict. So if you are concerned with issues like the rights of sexual minorities, for example, or the rights of cultural minorities of one kind or another. It's a free market economy with a limited government, which is by far the best way of defending those rights and enabling the people who have views, which maybe don't chime with those of the majority, to realize those views and to live the life in the way that they want to. The common notion is that free markets disproportionately benefit the wealthy and that they, in fact they make the condition of the poor worse. There are a number of things you can say in response to this. The first is that in fact the economic growth that is produced by a market economy actually raises the living standards of the poorest people more effectively than anything else. In 1820, 80% of the world's population lived on less than a dollar a day in inflation adjusted terms, constant dollars. Now, after just two centuries of capitalism, it's less than 20%. So still a high number, but a lot better than it was before. The evidence from welfare states around the world is that in fact most welfare transfer systems trap people in poverty, destroy the cohesion of poor communities. It's markets and the chance to improve yourself through participating in market exchange which is much more effective in terms of raising the living standards of the poorest people. What about the idea that the rich get an unfair advantage? To the extent that they get more than the poor, that doesn't matter so much if the poor are also better off. However, it's also fair to say that in many cases the unfair advantages which are gained by wealthy classes come about not because of their position in the market, but because rather they are able to use their position to manipulate the government, to use the political process to bring benefits to themselves that they would not get in a competitive market economy. And so that's why if you are a social democratic egalitarian, a liberal as they call them in America, you should also be a libertarian.